Hi everyone, my name is James Ivey. I'm Paul Drew. From the Studio Rats. Oh, yes. And we're at my gaff for a change. And we're amongst greatness. We have our tame <laughs> bass player in the house, Mr. Ben Hearn is with us. Thanks for having me. Pretty exciting day. Toys, new toys are mm. always good. It is, yes, it's very exciting. So six years ago, Boss came out with the Boss Katana for guitar and bass players have been crying out for the Boss Katana bass. And guess what? We've got a Boss Katana bass. We've got the Boss Katana bass. We've actually got, they brought out two models. So we've got the two by 10 amp, which is 160 watts. Which these days in bass terms doesn't sound like that much, but it's class AB. It's not class D, which means, okay, it's a bit heavier, yep. but it's a two by 10 cap. It's gonna be fairly weighty anyway, but it's got that oomph and weight that you get with a proper, proper analog power amp, rather Absolutely. than one of these fancy class D things, which Absolutely. are great, but that's got a bassy, I'm gonna use the word girth, I just am. <laughs> yeah, it does, but it does sound great, doesn't it? There's something, it's, it's, it's an awesome sounding amp on its own, but it can do so much more. So, we've got an amp, we have a bass player. We thought, as we're all in the same room, all at the same time, which is a rare thing these days, mm -hmm. we'd actually record a new Studio Rats track. Let's do it. Which is what we've been doing. Um, quite frankly, mate, it's get a nice tone and see where we end up. Because obviously, it being a katana, it's got all the whistles and bells you could ever imagine. Mm -hmm. But first and foremost, it needs to have a good, solid bass tone. Well, should we do that? Should we get Ben to get the tone that he wants out of it? So Ben's going to be using the top of the, the controls on the top of the katana. Uh, when Ben makes a movement, you're going to see the knobs move on Tone Studio. And then we'll talk about the some of the I.O. that's on the back and all that sort of stuff. Now, what's interesting is you've gone and done what you would have probably done in the mix anyway, made it a little bit gritty. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Which is quite interesting because I was always very afraid to put distortion or drive onto a bass, mm -hmm. a bit of grit, if you like. But Ben, being professional bass player extraordinaire, has done that anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, so Ben's chosen a sound that he would like. Now we're going to completely... Trash it. Trash it. <laughs> we'll have a look. So... Should we, move, should we move over to Tone Studio? Yes. So Tone Studio, it looks basically the same as the Katana Tone Studio. So you've got your preamp section and you've got a couple of effects and you've also got a blend of, so you can actually blend in and out the dry signal. So Ben, if you want to play for us a bit. Okay. And then we've got three different presets which we can store on these uh, on the blend control up here. Let's bring that all the way back because we're not going to be using that. Um, now you've also got two different effects. So Ben, if you can play for me. And if I choose effects one, you can see what it is, which is a phaser. Nice one. Then if I click up here, I can change the different effects that are stored inside of this patch. Oh, that T-Roll is great, actually. Okay, and then we can change, if we want to change the effect inside of that effects preset as such, then we can click here and choose between all these different effects. So if I click on Univibe. So there's effects one, and then we can click on effects two. So you've got two effects that you can run in conjunction with each other. Okay. So we've got chorus on that effect. And again, we can choose between all the different effects that we've got. And to be honest, most of them are all of the, the, the same sort of effects that are inside the, the guitar katana. And then we've also got this drive section. Now these are effects pedals as such, modeled effects pedals. And we've actually got some dedicated uh, bass overdrives as well. Ben, could you play for me? Mm -hmm. 
The Boss Katana we have here is the Tuba 10 with a tweeter. Yep. Which is very cool. It's a bi-amped amp module, meaning you have a separate amplifier for the two woofers than the tweeter. Yep. Now, why a tweeter? A, sometimes bass players like a bit of spangity spang. There it is, spangity spang. But also, it means it becomes a full range cabinet. Yeah. Which means if you happen to have your phone with some tunes on that you want to play along with, it's got Bluetooth on it, which is very, very cool. Mm -hmm. But it also means you get a much more balanced sound. You're not got one amplifier trying to do everything. Yeah. Much, much cooler. Um, it's a really, really good sounding cabinet. It sounds great in the room, but it has to be said, for the recording, because obviously there's drums in the room, guitars with microphones on, speaker cabs, things like that. We've come out of the direct out straight into my Neve 1073 OPX. Yep. And it's going straight into the, into the recording solution, into the desk. And it sounds monster. And we've, yeah, we've tried it out with James playing drums and it's definitely loud enough for I think there's a compliment in there for that. I'm not sure there's a compliment for me. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, so it's definitely loud enough. And even though, you know, some people might go, well, it's, it's 160 watts, surely that's that's not loud enough for, for a bass amp. It is most definitely loud enough to keep up with a drummer. If truth be told, if you need, you know, there are so many bass amps out there that claim they're a thousand watts or claim they're 700 watts. A, as we've said before, that's class D watts, not actual good old fashioned analog AB watts. Mm -hmm. And two, if you're do or B, well, I'm not sure which, um, if you're <laughs> doing those sort of gigs, there's probably a fairly hefty PA there as well. Yeah. And you're just gonna run that straight out to the PA anyway. Um, stage sound being what it is these days, we don't need huge bass rigs and over the toply powerful guitar amps, nope. boys, <laughs> yeah. on stage. And it's a sad case. This is not going to replace someone's Uber, Gallon and Kruger, or I'm trying to think of another Big top Ampeg. end Ampeg, because yeah. it's just not. It's they're not focusing it in that space. This is very much for the the cool. gigging bass player. Yeah who wants to be portable, but also be able to practice at home, yeah. to be able to plug this into their, their computer for recording, yeah. which of course it, we know it can do. Katana Bass works equally well alongside the GFC foot controller. Yeah. You know, it's a really, really cool solution. I mean, we we both own Katana guitar amps. Fantastic, yeah. And they hold their own with the super high-end stuff. Can I say about this? Yeah. If you buy the bigger version, which is the 210, it's got a speaker out as well. So if you want to use an external speaker, you can use it with this as well. Yeah, so if you've got a, a 15 or something like that. Yeah. That's a nice touch. Nice bit of low yeah, end yeah, for yeah. it, it'd be great. Yeah. And actually you could pick those up dirt cheap now because everyone's getting rid of all their big bass rigs because for all these same reasons as I've already said, nobody wants loud rigs on stage anymore. So we really hope you enjoyed that. If you did, please like, subscribe, hit the bell. That is nasty and cheap. Hello. But for now, my name's James Ivey. I'm Paul Drew. And this is Ben Hearn from the Studio Rats, and we will see you again very soon. Take it away, Ben. This is my jazz face. <laughs>